here we go. Just um, showing this. Um, this is the Yamaha APX 500, which is a uh, pretty much your your bargain basement, your your budget uh, guitar, your sort of entry level guitar here uh, for, for Yamaha. And uh, I've I've had this now about a year, and it's uh, been a great workhorse for me. Um, first thing you notice know when you pick this. Uh, first thing you notice know when you pick this thing up, it's very light really is very light, you just pick it up with one hand it's a great guitar, you just have around and just play a few chords on it, whatever and um, okay so I got this, I've been an electric player for many years I uh, wanted to do some acoustic stuff so I decided to try to quite a few in the local guitar shop here Settled on this one. The main reason was the, the, the neck, the playability of the neck for me. Having small hands anyway, I gravitate towards a, a neck with a slimmer profile. So if you're the same, you know, if, if you're um, just starting guitar, that I don't think you'll find one that's really any better playing than, than one of these really in, in the range of, of guitar, acoustic guitar certainly. So it's a nice slim profile here, it's nicely boned as well, you've got white plastic binding all the way down it. The frets are really nicely finished on this one here, there's a good slab of rosewood as well, it's a very good quality feeling uh, neck to the, to the surface of it. And the other thing I like, I like to slide uh, about quite a bit on the neck so that the frets here do not stick up very much you know from the from the fretboard they don't stick up too too far so it's it's uh, so altogether I don't think you'll get a better playing neck than this one it's really handy just to, to pick up very nice indeed now I know that the, the build quality Bears in mind the price. I mean, this these were only about two hundred and fifty pound. I think I paid for this one, and uh, I don't know what really what kind of what it's made of, and I don't really care because it's glued nicely together. It's got nice binding as well, as you can see this this white binding along the sides of it. It did have a uh, piezo system, which it will have at some stage in the future with the controls in here. However, mine came to a short end because I decided I was going to take the um, take the <coughs> the bridge off. Excuse me. I decided I was going to uh, see if I could um, lower the action on the strings because that's that's the only thing which was putting me off with this guitar. And and basically, you've got to remember, any guitar you make from the factory, they just send it out from the factory, and it's up to players around the world then what they do with it, whether they just stick with the factory setting or whether they modify it to their own, you know, sort of preferences. Now me, I, I don't like the action being too high, I don't like it so low that it buzzes. So we, we need a, a compromise, we need a halfway house. And what I did was I took the, the bridge out, I'll just show you what I've got in there at the moment, which is just a strip of a very hard compound plastic, which I cut off a, a clipboard but there's lots of different household surfaces which can suffice for it. What I did was I took the bridge out that unfortunately then I let the piezo system fall out. So my advice is if you're doing the same, keep the guitar flat. The piezo system fell out to cut long story short. I couldn't get it back in. Well, I got it back in, but it didn't work then. All right. So what I've done for the meantime is I have put a little... Um, acoustic microphone in the the sort of thing you can get for under 20 quid in an electrical supply shop 
I've put a little screw into the wood bracket inside and clipped that microphone in so it doesn't rattle about. The only thing is what to do with the um, the lead of it. So uh, at the moment I'm just taping it up. That's that's fine for now. And uh, this it's got a jack plug at the end of mine and it goes into my my amplifier. All right. Um, so that gives me the sound, you know the amplification on it. What I've done here, just tried a little bit of an experiment with different sizes of, of, of plastic in the in the bridge, and uh, you can you know sort of cut it to whatever you, you action you like. But really, the, I, I've got to tell you that you don't have to put up with a very high action on these guitars if you want, because they are very true necks. It, it's a smashing neck. I've not had to do any adjustment or any fret leveling or anything with this, which I've done with some electrics. So I've just got a, just a little bit of, of action there on the on the guitar now. But um, as I say, all I've done is just use that. I've not even cut any um, slots for the the strings. The strings sort of sit on top of the the nut once it's put in in tune, and um, you've got to. It's all going through the mic anyway with that, and, and even when it's not. Uh, but then you, it's, it seems you've got the same tonal quality as you would basic. I mean, you, you would have anyway from a plastic bridge, let's face it. You know, they're not using, you know, ivory or anything like that in these guitars. Uh, okay, so that's all uh, to say on that. Uh, as I say, I've been very impressed with this. And um, I use Rotor Sound 11s, I think, on uh, this one. They're 11s. These, this happened to be an electric guitar strings I'm using in here now. Couldn't get any acoustic, so it seems to do the the trick just just the same. So I've put several clips on here, maybe too many of me doing different uh, stuff on this. If you want to take a look at that, okay. Happy playing, folks. Bye for now.